Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Norman Fong. Uh, today's topic is Ladia purpurella. And I think I showed this on the podcast before. Uh, don't mind me. This is not as pretty because this particular plant, they actually grown outdoor for the last 10 years. It is. Uh, Jeff, you know, it going through the hot weather of 115 degree, okay? Uh, it go down as low as 38 before, 30, 35. Uh, if you thought the Lady of Pabrata, uh is one of my, uh, this print is actually, is a gift from one of my mentors, Dr. Uh, Roger Brown, uh, Dr. Browning, Browning. And this is actually a water one. And I think I, on the previous podcast before, I said I want to repot it and divide it and maybe in the future for me for auction but never able to able to do it because the timing uh for if you have a lady preparata never never divide or repot them in the middle of fall to winter that is the easiest way to kill them <laughs> or disrupt them uh obviously the best uh what i want to what I had learned from the growing Lady Preparata outdoor, and you can actually duplicate that in your area. Okay, first of all, we, I know we have a lot of member in the South Florida, or the tropical area, and you do have a lot of rain, okay? So the best way to grow Lady Preparata is to put it in, I know many of you grow the Vanda, okay? You put it in the Vanda basket, a lot of open air. Uh, they do, not like to be get a lot of water during the raining season so if you have a lot of rain you make sure you put it in air in the area they then get plenty of rain in the wind in the summertime i know it's kind of hard but i uh they always the nice thing about lady preparata for me uh that i really enjoy and treasure this is actually uh the plant is actually awarded in 2012 uh, it has a HEC AOS uh, from Dr. Browning. And so I was, I guess, the main, usually, that, uh, okay, this is the perfect example of the uh, Purpurata type seeding. And guess how old this plant, you know, this grow in California, uh, out of flask, this is about four to five years old. Okay, and this is what we call near blooming site. Okay, so this, <clears throat> So the plant like this is used, I would guess estimate maybe about 50 years old, you know, from if it's from the very, very beginning. And you can actually count how many grow they have. So this is actually, this is why I like when you grow uh, any of the species or especially Caleria, do not try to divide them in a hurry. Always pot them up until, you know, until they, and until that this is actually have a lot of backbone okay and the backbone actually have a lot of ringo that's okay we all got ringo uh but they store a <laughs> lot of a lot of uh, energy for the plant okay uh outdoor i hardly because I, it's in the area that uh sunny gonna see next year we our outdoor growing area is always had covered air, covered so they, they never got rain on uh, uh, and we do not, we actually only maybe water, if you go outdoor in Southern California or the west, western Mississippi, uh, where area is maybe drier, uh, in the winter time, they do not, they kind of go dormant. Uh, they usually do a lot of the growing in the, uh, right after the flower finish. The, from the very beginning of the flower, uh, this has been open for at least four weeks already, outdoor. So to keep the flower last longer, I will I actually move them into the greenhouse. That's where I have a better, uh, this way I can keep the, uh, the flower for another three weeks. So those of you coming to the symposium uh, next week, come to the nursery, uh, this will still be holding up for, for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, if you do have a chance to buy Lady Apparata, and a lot of orchid show, for example, when I go to Redland, there's a lot of people, 
uh, this is actually still is the national flower of Brazil. Okay, uh, they always depend on where you live. The purple rata can be flower from May. For me, to July. For me in California, it's always in July. Okay, uh, we do not. Many of you know, we do not use fungicide here. Okay, so uh, a lot of time you're gonna get this is older leaf. And that's okay. This is part of the senescence, you know, part of the, the aging effect. Uh, many of you from the previous uh, podcast, I do not like to cut the leaf prematurely. I know I like to let them die back, dry back naturally, because this is why they actually send back a lot more the uh, the nutrient. And by the time they die back naturally, they will they will detach themselves. So they will actually have a healing, dry healing. Uh, but if you do have to cut it prematurely, for example, always have, always find the tool. And I usually always do about two or three ahead of time. And then in the cool off. Okay. Obviously, since I'm, I'm going to do some cleaning because obviously I might people are going to come visit, and so I do want to cut it prematurely on this one here, and you can do that especially if you take it to your orchid society meeting. Okay. And, and this is why I like to use my two-in-one cakey paste. Uh, the nice thing about this cakey paste, and you might wonder, what do you want to do with a cakey paste? Uh, you're not doing a, a, another, another plant from here. Uh, no, but you know what? The, when I do the cakey paste, this is actually formulated by, by myself. And many of you know, I have a, a plant tissue culture background. There's normal two-in-one cakey paste. Uh, we use the kinetin. We actually using the uh, kinetin is a type of cytokinin uh, that's in courage of the print division. And the petroleum, the vaccinin in there, it's actually help to seal. But the kinetin that we use in here is actually is not synthetic cytokinin. It's actually natural. It's very expensive. Uh, kinetin is uh, the the kinetin that we use is actually start from diverse from the corn. Yes, the corn from the Midwest, from Jeff uh, back home. Yeah, the kinetin. Yeah, this is why the remember the kinetin in corn. That's why the corn in the summertime goes so fast. Yeah. So this is not synthetic. A lot of these, most of the most of the cakey paste. On the market are uh, using the synthetic one. Synthetic one, if you work on this, will not do anything. But this kind of thing in here, when I seal them, okay, they actually gonna help them the tissue that we, we, we cut them. It's actually gonna help not only to kill the not only seal the cut surface, but also the penetrate the, the natural kind of thing will penetrate into the suitable. Okay, so that actually make a lot of good. Uh, we also have customer if you want to encourage more this is what i'm going to do before i start dividing uh if you want even to encourage some of the eye from the backbone i can also put some of the cakey paste on the up backbone of the eye because a lot of times you know the backbone usually do not put on new growth okay and you guys you can do that early right now because right at the all the energy right now is on the flower okay I can also put this at the base of the shoe just peel off the skin okay you don't you don't cut any surface and because of, because the kind of thing in my uh, two-in-one cakey paste is natural so the cashew can absorb through the print. And this way, 
I can make sure they have I have a, a better uh, encourage more new shoe coming up. So a lot of time instead of one shoe coming up, I I might have two multiple lead. So when the when the shoe about two to four inches, that's when you, you can start dividing them. Or in your case, will be you can repart them. Okay. So for example, <clears throat> this is part of the net that you can repart them. But obviously, this is the plan. <clears throat> It's actually in, in the what we call the vegetative stage. So this is the stage. Don't leave it alone. Do not do not repot them. And this is what this plant. By the time I have the time want to do anything with it, it's already in the middle of the summer. And it's too hot. So the timing for the preparata that I like to see for repotting or in this case, in this particular, uh, it's very like two, very so small window. It's after the flower finish and a new girl coming up, about maybe for about six months, two to uh, four to six weeks. And this is why I start this year. I'm gonna start earlier, and then we start putting cakey paste on the top. I'm gonna encourage the new shoot coming up because the flower, it's gonna last about two, at least two months for me on this, the, this particular clone. That means they're gonna they're gonna delay the new shoe coming up. Okay, if I want to divide the print early uh, this year, I need to have a shoe coming up early. Okay, so this is why uh, be flexible. This is why uh, you always want to have this uh, Norman two two in one kicky pace. It's not just for the final analysis, the all day that you have a kicky and a baby heaven. No, it's actually wonderful uh, for Catalina. I used to find on my Dendrovium, Lady Sipper, Parfipedium, because maybe I should change the name, not the name Kiki Pace. <laughs> okay, if you think about a better name, let me know. Uh, is, but the different, the, the, the different, the main different is the kind of, that we use the kind of thing, uh, as a, it's a natural growth hormone, naturally de uh, derived from the corn in the Midwest, from the Midwest, okay? Uh, and it's quite difficult to do it because you cannot autocrate them. Uh, we also had to fill a cold filter uh, on the kinetin, but this is why it's, it works so well for us. Uh, the light requirement, uh, obviously, it, it might see some black spot. Can you see some spark, black spark in there? That is not rotting. Did you see some suitable with black spot? Sunburn. Okay, that is not rotting. Okay, this is actually from last year, uh, it, uh, because they put it in the angle and they got they got full sun on the west coast on the west side. It pretty much burned the print, but this is how strong the preparata. So it, it looked black, but it's not, those are not rotting. Those are just sunburn, okay? Uh, but it does uh, leave a permanent, permanent scar. And this is why uh, Purpurata is so strong. And I think that everybody should uh, grow Purpurata or the hybrid from Purpurata. And here is a perfect example of Stralidia. This is actually uh, our NF. 2632. Don't worry, I will give you a link later. Uh, is Lady Preparata by Tenu Borsa. And then to Tenu Borsa again. Why do we do that this way? Okay, Tenu Borsa is another Lady uh, very similar to Preparata, but more compact. And it's actually reddish orange in color and or brown in color. So this one, this hybrid here had two shots of Lady Tenu Brosa, uh, one shot of Purpurata. The idea is to keep the print side more compact, more manageable, okay? Uh, Purpurata cannot be, it's hard to grow on the light. It's actually, it should be, uh, it should be a uh, 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 outdoor grant. It, you can easily grow them, and this is why I live in outdoor year round, okay? Because there's take too much space in my room. Uh, in my sun, uh, in my uh, greenhouses, but 
Lady of Aurora make a really, really big statement. And that's why they uh, is a national flower of Brazil. And one of my to-do lists is always uh, in Brazil. I think for them it's in the fall because the equator. Uh, they have a one show, I think in October, nothing but preparata. So all kind of preparata. This is not the Kania form. This is actually the, the, the purple uh, streak form. Okay, so preparata is for my, for it's a rather pest disease. Uh, the only thing that the uh, pest you might have is sometimes the scale. But this is why I always peel off the shield. Why is the plant not mature? The dry sheet had, the sheet was to protect the young suitable. So once this is finished, I will try to peel them off because this is inside here is where usually the scale uh, will hide. But another nice thing about being work, uh, growing in outdoor because they got naturally got a lot of air movement. Okay, so they I never got scale for any of my cattle yet when they will grow outdoor. In a greenhouse, it's more moisture. Sometimes the air circulation is not as good. That's why the scale might find them. Okay, uh, other than that, it's pretty much pest and disease free. Uh, they are heavy feeder. So from now to October is what we call the grow season. Okay, plenty of water, plenty of sun, they, and they can take full morning sun, plenty of water. They don't sh shy on the water for them because they, any of the suitable should be, not, new grow like this should be nice and prompt. Why is that one year or two year old, they will go get this wrinkle, that's naturally. So if you get in, uh, we always a customer get a meal order, you print it, you know, what's wrong with my orchid? You know, they got wrinkle. That's okay. <laughs> God made it this way, we all get wrinkle. But the new growth always have this prime and juicy, suitable, smooth. After that, they're gonna get wrinkle. And which is good, because that way, when the water coming down in their natural habitat, the water go, go down to the, the bottom naturally. So this is actually help that the water go down. So uh, other than that, I think I cover everything out. Do we have any questions? Yeah. Does there ever become a time where you have too many old back bulbs? Yes. Or that it becomes detrimental to the plant and it needs to be divided because you have too many? Yes. Well, this, in this case, this is like at least almost 50 years old. Okay. I, and I, if I show you this back, this is this this old lady have a lot of the backside. Okay, so this is why we do repotting. Okay, so this is actually, uh, and the because all this back bulb when they are attached, they are dormant, and this is actually great. You see how long, how old, how long they hold on to the old suitable. They are, they are, they are. These are all keeper because this is a lot of time they are actually full reserve for the front. Sometimes we forgot to water them, especially when it was outdoor. I forgot that we might not feed them as regularly as possible. Uh, if they need it, more nutrient because of the light, because we got good weather, really hot. This is where they, they get in the food sources from. Uh, but they will not do any growing until when we divide them. Yes. So this is the this is the case. I know I was trying to divide them last year. It's too late. But we will have Eric do a podcast because Eric loved to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> Eric probably need his chainsaw again. I don't know what you're gonna do with it. But this is when we divide them. Okay, I was to ask Eric to send me the back here. And this is when we're gonna start the fun part for me is to do a lot of manipulation with the cakey paste and make it dry. And we're gonna do another, I, I think I share this method with the group. If you are a new member, go back to 2020 or 2021, the upside down method when you do this backbone, okay? It worked. Uh, and then other than that, 
enjoy the plant. So for those of you coming next week to the nursery, uh, we will put this at the nursery, at the sales area, so everybody can enjoy it, take a picture with them. Okay, so this is a grand lady. And Pepe Perperata can get as big as 10 inches inside. And this is why in the old days, if you look at the picture from the old Hollywood picture, the, a lot of these uh, corsages actually all have Lady Perperata in the background. Obviously, they have good flower count. It had the size. And if naturally a flower in about May for a large area. So this is actually in the background for a lot of the, the mother state cut flower as a, as a, as a grand species parent, okay? Uh, other than that, water, feeding this time of year, okay? And then uh, enjoy the flower. I know, go back to review. Uh, if make sure you subscribe the channel, okay. Uh, on the inside of the channel, type in Perperata, it will bring up some of the order. Uh, the one I did maybe two years ago on Lady Perperata, okay, uh, the same plant. This year it's not as grand as pretty as a uh, couple years ago, because obviously it's going outdoor. It has all that kind of element, but consider how. How stressful can they be outdoor? Uh, right now we have about 80, 90 degree, 90 degree. Or sunny. Boom, one night, everything couple open. I wasn't even aware this is in flower until just in, in the shortest of three days. Everything pop open. Voila. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing this podcast today because that, this is the only way, once a year is my bragging right to show off my preparata. Thank you very much and enjoy your weekend.